One of the projects here at Authentic Sound, so to speak, that has been put on a hold a few years ago, but actually is ongoing for many more years, is the transformation of that building, that's the barn next to your house, into a recording studio. I have been postponing that project for a long time, but now today, actually as we speak, Anya is making a phone call to her architect to say, we will go ahead and build the studio. This has been a project that for me always was a little bit scary because of course there is some financial investment and maybe even potential risk involved. But yeah, one has to find the courage sometimes in life to make that big jump. So I'm standing here now next to the road where we live. Uh, that's our house here. So you see the large window. That's the window where the Irar piano is uh, now. And behind these trees, follow me. That's the barn here. I'll show you in a minute. There are several reasons to think on the rehearsal room or the recording studio, whatever you want to call it, is this road. It's now two o'clock in the afternoon so it's not so busy traffic and we live here in a beautiful environment if you look at this we almost have no neighbors there are horse stables behind our house I can show you I'm walking now on a field that belongs to my brother-in-law was all for the whole farm here was property of Anya's parents and she has two older brothers uh, one is 14 and one is 16 years older so and my mother-in-law still lives next to us. She's 87. And we basically rebuilt the farm of my parents-in-law. So the, you see the horse tables there, very nice people. And very good for Evelyn because she is really crazy about horses. Yesterday she had an introduction there with a, with a, with a small pony. But this street can have in rushing time hours around 300 cars an hour. I've been counting that actually, so uh, might not surprise you. It makes a lot of noise, which for living is not a problem because our house is very well insulated, but for making recordings, well, that's sometimes problematic. Then we have the airplanes. Now it's very silent. Also that depends on the time of the day very rarely in the evening hours except Monday and Tuesday so we know that normally after uh, 5 6 5 30 in the evening they will not fly and there are days like now where I don't think there has been any flights today but you never know and if you plan a recording well that's too bad then because you focus and you are I'm still looking at the wrong screen I'm sorry it's still this new camera um, which is wonderful by the way but you you plan for a recording and then something's happen something happens outside whether it is a car driving or whether there are works or whether even in the horse tables there is here the, sometimes they work uh, at the buildings and there is or they, they they mow the grass or the lawn or they they cut trees or whatever and then you can quit your recording session and all this this focus and and the concentration you build that up of course and well that's in vain for that session and that's something that is quite annoying if you if that happens a lot of time there is something on the lens here let me take it off i was playing ping pong but i'm doing that very rarely now i have no time anymore and don't pay attention here to the mess anya will kill me i don't know that she doesn't know that i'm filming here but yeah it's the best way to show you So the plan is actually to remove that wall, that's just an internal wall, remove the floor here, which is not problematic, it's very thin concrete floor, and obviously the roof 
It was actually the first idea. The roof is really old. It's 1960, 1956, this building. It is beautifully made. Certainly those wooden beams that go up, but the roof itself is as best. No problem as long as it stays on the roof, but it starts to do, do uh, what you say, to denigrate really quickly now. So it's time to remove that. Working table here. Now it's a mess. I built it myself, by the way. All the electricity here I did myself. As many things in the house. It was a thing we could, uh, when my parents-in-law were, I think, around 70, they divided everything they had amongst their three children. And we got the house, but it's too big for us. It still is very challenging to um, maintain that building because it's really large. So I had to do many things myself which I actually enjoy. I quit doing that when I was playing it more and more again. So you have these machines like the sewing machine which I used really a lot and it's kind of dangerous you know. But the plan is actually to clean the whole inside of this building and then have a wall around here. So we have one room here and a large room here at this side. We built a box in the box so for sound insulation it should be perfect. So if you build a box in the box and I'm not going into detail here we can make some videos on that if you're interested in the principles of building recording studio. I'm not a specialist but I've learned and read so much about it so um, if you build a box in the box you have a, a very good insulation of sound isolation from outside to inside and vice versa. But the sound, the frequencies that are produced here inside, sound waves, they, they, can, they cannot escape anymore. And so they return inside and there is a building up of all these frequencies. And that's something you have to manage and to control. I have some windows with this view, you know. If, you, if we would open this, the chill room, as, as Sophia is uh, calling that, if we open this with some windows, we have actually this view. Let me take you outside. So that's not too bad, I think. This work to be done. So, and then here will be the recording room. We plan to have a live room, which means with a lot of lively acoustics, not, not overpowering the room. It's not like a church, but very bright, open sound with a lot of stone and wood so maybe even making a kind of variable acoustics that you can open pa opening panels and of one side absorption material and the other side uh, reflective material so that's the plan We had extensive contact with Philip Newell. Some of you will remember him and I will link some videos with Philip here on screen. He is a wonderful man, really wonderful, wonderful man. Also personally, we, had so, we have so nice, nice memories. We went to Vigo in Spain where he lives. And again, I will link the playlist here. It's an old playlist of three years ago. It ha doesn't have a lot of views, but I think it's cool stuff to watch. So we, even then, we, we cannot really say what is the correct balance because we hear differently. As soon as you go through a microphone and through loudspeakers, you've changed the circumstances completely in, yeah. in the way that we hear it. Yeah. So it's, it's, all, it's all about a compromise. And it's all about trying to make a recording that, that people can enjoy. That, yeah. That's the job of the recording engineers and producers. It's still a very artistic function. It's not, it's not a scientific function that you can somehow analyze it and say this is the most accurate recording. Because nobody can say what is the accurate sound of the instrument. It changes in every room. Yeah, with every and, and the instruments were never designed <coughs> to be played in an anechoic chamber or outside. Yeah. So you can't use that as a, as a, um, as a reference no. because the instrument was never played. So there, there isn't any, it's got to sound nice. It's got yeah. to sound, to have the right, the right dynamics, the right emotion, the right yeah. feeling. But Philip, 
is not able anymore to travel. And also, honestly, these guys, they, they work on such a high professional level that, well, that's with, with a very professional control room and everything on it, that's maybe uh, a little bit too high for us. So we want to have a very nice sounding room separated from the street where it's nice to work. So the second reason that we would have, we really need this room is well, as many of you said already, where are you going to put the third piano? That's almost impossible because we don't have a room in the, in the house. And yes, it's a big house, as you can see. It was a farm, but we lived there with four people and my instruments are actually in the living room. And so it's wonderful to see my family taking care of me, but also caring about the things I'm doing. But there comes a moment where I want, well, there are possibilities to do more live streams, to make more recordings, to make more stuff on YouTube, to, to work in a more focused, concentrated way. If I would have my office, that would be here. And when I enter that office in the morning, I will get more the feeling of work and be more focused. And if I close the door at the evening, I will go inside the house and maybe I'm more focused on my family. And that's also part of the reason that this uh, is a project that, well, I said we were thinking about a long time ago and it's scary, more for me than for Anya, and this is a personal reflection. Uh, well, yeah, some of you will know already. Financially, it's for me something that, that keeps me awake, but I see the current situation with the instruments in home, the facilities that we have to produce, also with the street, the sounds, everything, the noise, I mean, everything puts a barrier on what we can do and so this room this building will potentially give us a lot of freedom in producing stuff and making things happening for authentic sound but because that's everything that we want to have this message to out to have authentic sound as well a research platform for performance practice that's what we want and that will be the room for that to close this video and this is not something that's this is not a commercial uh, talk but my patrons there are 88 people now that's the backbone for me of making this decision it gives me the courage to do to jump to make to, to close this big gap which is only so big because of fear as most most important decisions are not taken because of fear what will happen if but seeing these 88 people and stepping in and saying here we support you financially and there are people who support one dollar a month which is amazing there are people who support 30 dollars a month which is also amazing of course it is so no matter what they support it builds really a kind of feeling that this is going to be a project that at the long run will be sustainable as with all of you here on youtube watching my videos being such a dedicated audience that's the best audience a musician can wish for really that drives me to do and takes this decision so well share your ideas with me in the comment box below and i'm more than happy to read um, ideas and thoughts and suggestions um, just say to me what you think and uh, I will take those advices into account as I always do. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you haven't done so already. And see you in the next video. Bye.